That's right. Good morning, Scott. Good news here. If you look behind me, you'll notice traffic is flowing here on Elm and Griffin Street. Yes, they had to have a firefighter positioned on each floor of the hotel so that when guests woke up in the dark, if they were alarmed, they could be escorted down. Now, keep in mind, it all started on the 19th floor. I talked to a witness uh, just a little while ago from the 19th floor who's staying at the hotel who told me he noticed that inside the hotel there that it was kind of collapsing there in the hallway. Now, again, talking to fire officials and hotel officials, they plan to get the power back on, but they're not sure exactly how long it's going to take. For now, we're live in Dallas. Amanda Fitzpatrick, NBC5. All right. Well, good morning, Lindsay. Look at this. This is a big piece of concrete that you're looking at, a concrete beam, and this is what almost laid it there onto the lanes of 161. Now, keep in mind, this happened last night. Fortunately, it did not, but it did, however, break, as you can see, this part here of the side of the medium. And we want to give you a close look of the crane that was carrying that beam. You can see right there where it looks as if it has snapped. And look at how mangled this is. And we can smell diesel fuel this morning. Uh, we're assuming it has come out of this crane. Again, a massive crane that somehow collapsed here onto the ground. And we are told no one was hurt, which is good news. Um, it only smashed, I believe, some items that were underneath it, but no people, which again is good news when you look at just how big this crane is. Now, we did some research into the numbers. About 1,500 or more accidents happened, according to TxDOT in construction zones, and more than 100 injuries or deaths also happened in construction areas. Again, fortunately, when you look at this here, these pipes, and you look at, I'm sorry, these hoses, rather, and you look at this broken part of the crane, you have to wonder what happened and, you know, be fortunate again that no one was hurt. For now, we're live in Dallas. Amanda Fitzpatrick, NBC5. Incredible. Good morning, Scott. Now, outside, you can smell the smoke in the air. Inside, you see that? That is their garage, or what used to be their garage. This is where the fire started. It spread quickly through this kitchen area where you can see the kitchen table and other items here completely charred and burned. Burned. Now, you mentioned six adults, two children were inside the home when the fire broke out, and fortunately, they were all able to get out safely. One of them, 11 year old Calvin, here, uh, we found him this morning out here with his family. Calvin, you were talking about just how scared you were. I mean, what, what was it like when you were getting out of the fire, honey? I'm scared. I was scared, terrified. And you told me, you know, you your uncle rushed you out. You were lying in the bed. You, were, you said it could have been really bad because you sleep pretty hard, right? Yes. And what happened? You went back in to get someone. Who'd you go back in to get? My dog and my puppy. You're kind of like a little hero, right? How's the family doing? Good. And also, you were saying your PlayStation, you, were you, you couldn't get to that, right? That kind of burned up, but you're glad to be out safe. And, I mean, do you remember what did it look like as far as the fire? Tell me what you were telling me earlier. Well, at first, me and my uncle, my uncle was playing my video game, and I was, what, I was going to sleep. And then he asked me, don't you smell like smoke? And I'm like, yeah, I kind of smell it. And we start going to the kitchen. And we start uh, looking at places, opening windows. And I opened the garage door. It's like huge smoke. And I told my uncle to run because there was fire in the garage. Wow. Well, Calvin, thank you so much for talking with us this morning. Again, the family out safe and even just being here, seeing his bicycle and his shoes, uh, they pretty much escaped with their lives. For now, we're live here. Amanda Fitzpatrick, NBC5. Wow. That's right. Good morning, Lindsay. We now know the name of that victim, 85-year-old Marvin Dorsey. I talked to his daughters, his sons, of course, as you can imagine uh, just how hard this must be for them. And, you know, he was inside of his bedroom, we're told, which is right here. You can still see the smoke on the outside of the home. And we want to show you an old photo of Dorsey. Now, he lived here all by himself. His family came here just to gather his personal belongings. All this happened at about 2.30 this morning. Now, they grabbed a scrapbook of memories and some other items. Items. They wanted us to know that he left behind seven children, 20 grandchildren, that he was a good dad who worked for his family. Now, Dorsey made it out of his bedroom to the kitchen when that electrical fire started in his bedroom. Firefighters worked to get him out. They even were able to get him to the hospital, but it was too late. His daughter taking it hard. My dad has given us everything. <laughs> My dad has given us everything. Everything that we could ever want. <laughs> oh, I don't want to live without my dad. For now, we're live in Dallas. Amanda Fitzpatrick, NBC5.
Well, good morning, Christy. The good news, no one was hurt in this fire. Now, I want to introduce you to Mark Dodd, who is a Wise County Fire Marshal. We've been talking a little bit about this big plume of dark smoke, and is this a risk to any of the residents nearby? We, we have not had any complaints on 911 of uh, any problems with the smoke. Uh, looking at it and monitoring the, the fire department's watching and the plume, and we believe the, the uh, wind is helping now. So, helping us out a lot carrying the smoke out. And just looking at this, I understand there were eight tanks that were initially involved, seven that were under fire. A lightning strike struck it, and then the fire started. Can you talk a little bit about what happened? Well, at 8.33, we got a call from the operator that a lightning strike had, had uh, struck one of the tanks, and there was a fire. On arrival, I believe they had four tanks uh, total involved. And now there's seven that have been involved. So. Uh, of that, five have burned off, and we're down to two tanks left. And they've ceased putting water and foam on it because they don't want to overfill the dike area that pre prevents any of that product from running off. And I understand you didn't want to have that to run into the groundwater. Again, you're saying that everyone here is safe and that the one person who came to check on this facility, that's when he saw the lightning? That's, that had to be scary for him. Right. My, what he told me was he was leaving the site, and he got uh, probably about 50 50 feet or 50 yards away and a lightning strike occurred and uh, uh, he was lucky that he just left the site when right. that happened. In one piece. And then we should also mention lastly uh, what this facility is. You, you're explaining a little bit about what it's used for. From what I understand they take uh, product uh, from gas wells. They separate off liquids that come out and they bring it to this side and they separate the water and the oil from each other and uh, will inject the water into a uh, injection well side. All right, thank you so much for that information. Again, Fire Marshal of Wise County, Mark Dodd. And we should also note, again, no injuries. And there are some residents that live on this back side, but the smoke is not going in that direction. This heavy wind we've been experiencing all morning, helping to blow the smoke away from those residents. And again, the person who came here to check on this, that saw that lightning strike, is also okay, Christy. So that's even more good news. Yeah, and again, uh, Amanda, you and the Fire Marshal were talking about that smoke. It sounds like there's no concern at all that it might be harmful. That's right. Just to be sure, EPA is on their way out here now. They plan on checking the ground and also checking just to make sure that it's okay. They are not going to add any water to that remaining one tank. Keep in mind, there were seven tanks that burned. This is the last one, and they are not adding water because they do not want the water to mix with that oil and get into the ground. Instead, they are going to let it burn out. So for some of the people we passed on the way here that were standing out and looking at the smoke, it's a big spectacle right now. Uh, they will continue to see that smoke because they're not going to add any additional water. So for now, everything is safe from what we're told, and EPA is on the way to make sure and guarantee that safety. Christy? All right. It's Tuesday, Brandon and Michaela Vanderstelt have been securely sleeping inside their tents, waiting for the Black Friday sales at this Best Buy in Denton. Their mission, clearly marked on this sign, Occupy Best Buy. We really don't have money, that much money, so it is a really good deal. But last night, the duo got a lot more than they bargained for. We just finished our 6 a.m. live report. That's when I looked through the window and I saw two men running towards their tent. I saw one of the guys urinate on the side of the tent while the other one took a picture. And that's when we jumped out. And all of a sudden, I hear y'all screaming and I see you and running after some guys. And I get out of the tent, y'all come back and tell me that someone had peed on the tent. And it's stupid. I don't get why somebody would do that. Photojournalist Carrie Smith caught the two masked culprits making a getaway. One man seen here in this exclusive video ran out of his flip flops. The two then managed to get in this gray SUV and drive away, but not before we caught a glimpse of this sharp object in one of their hands. By 7 a.m., Denton police were able to track the truck down by the license plate to a UNT student. So this is the first year for us. This is the earliest anybody's been out here, uh, but we definitely want to make sure you know our customers are taken care of this year in every in every measure. Best Buy GM David Gonzalez says they weren't expecting the early shoppers and are working with police and their corporate office to step up security. Don't hold up. Like and they have already made yourself. a good gesture, including donating this new tent and sleeping bags to the brave duo. I think it's the right thing. You know, they're definitely going to be out here for a while. And, you know, you know, they got uh, violated a little bit this morning. I think it's the right thing for us to do. This is like three or four times the size of ours. For David, whose wife Michaela is also five months pregnant, safety is a priority. But they have no plans of leaving their spot in line. You know, have some more people come out here with us just so we have a bigger group. 
but yeah, I don't think we leave because we've already been out here for three nights. Hoping this incident is a one-time occurrence. In Denton, Amanda Fitzpatrick, NBC5. That's right. He definitely made an impact on the Euless community. And I mean, Deborah, look at this. This is just one of the visuals they put up last night. You can see many candles here, along with a uh, animal stuffed animal there. His picture, a card, a cross, and many, many messages from students, past and present. Many of them wanted to pay their respects and his honor last night. He was always trying to better the students here, always. And if we ever had a problem, needed money for lunch or anything, we could always go to him and he would always help. And we should also note about 100 people came out last night. Again, he had been with the force at Euless Police Department for more than a decade, working here for several years. And he even gave lunch money, as she mentioned, to students. And a lot of kids talked about him just being there, an overall nice guy. Definitely missed by many. Again, this shocking the Euless community. Now, although they had the event last night, a memorial, they plan to hold another one tonight. That's because it rained last night. So they plan for people to come out tonight at 745 again to continue to pay tribute to Richard Wong. Deborah Scott. Yeah, Amanda, he worked there at Euless Trinity High School, but no doubt he had other connections in that community as well. Can you tell us about that? Sure can. You know, matter of fact, we went to the gas station next door a few minutes ago. Even inside there, people were still talking about Officer Wong. He was also a security guard at the Hearst Mall. And we should even show you here just some of the notes. I want to take a second. It says R.I.P. Wong, but you also see notes like Wong, you will be missed, uh, you know, love you and rest in peace. Just a lot of different notes from students, again, wanting the family to know the impact that he made on their lives. For now, we are live in Euless. Amanda Fitzpatrick, NBC5. Good morning, Chris. You know, we noticed something very important in the uh, changing of those lanes here. We're looking at the signs alongside here by the bridges over 114, including this one way sign. So we can only uh, imagine they are probably planning to place this along the bridge, as you talked about, with those closures happening later this evening for people returning to work as they drive home tonight. Well, we're going to tell you all about it. Here's the deal. In the new traffic pattern, TxDOT will make the Northwest Highway Bridge become a one way way going westbound into South Lake and then South Lake Boulevard FM 1709 will become a one way going eastbound into Grapevine. Now, currently both bridges go both ways, so it could create some confusion for drivers. The construction to reduce the lanes will begin tonight through Friday from 8 p.m. until 6 a.m. and will be in effect for months. Now the changes will make it easier for Texas to construct and widen Texas 114 and Texas 121 in the South Lake and Grapevine areas as they build a single eight lane bridge. Now this is a part of the $1.02 billion project and listen to this is expected to be complete in spring of 2013. For now we're live in Tarrant County. Amanda Fitzpatrick, NBC5.